Tony, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, so a few, a few people in the audience might have come across you at various conferences and events, but for the, for the benefit of those who, um, who, who don't know you or the, or the kind of the work that you've been involved with, um, with higher education, um, could you just like give a quick intro to yourself and tell us about your um, work in um, sort of digital marketing, please? Sure. So I, I think I first fell into um, the utilization of digital for student recruitment around about 2007. And the first project was a thing called University Choice TV. And this was in the very early days. Google had just, I think, completed its acquisition of YouTube. And there were no YouTubers. And universities were not using video as a, as a main form of recruiting students. And we launched a platform called University Choice TV, which lived off the back of YouTube, really. And we started to acquire um, student-generated content and, and compile that onto a platform. The platform then evolved and become something that we called Global Campus. And that was the first time I think anybody had tried, and it was a painful attempt, uh, to aggregate all of the courses onto a single website where you could search based upon entry requirements. Um, I then went on to into university partnerships, great bunch of people there. It was still in its infancy at that time and built out their digital platform and their digital offering before they became the really great education provider that they are today. Um, and that was the first website that really fully utilized Facebook. We were the first, I think, education provider to completely integrate the Facebook platform into our student facing website. Uh, we were the first advertiser on Facebook. Again, it seems crazy because everyone uses Facebook now and the duopoly of, duopoly of Google, but back then it was, it was seen as uh, quite an adventurous thing to do. I then went on and set up the uh, digital marketing capability within study group and I was there for about four years working with universities in Australia the US um, and across the world so I've yeah come across most uh, elements of, of digital marketing and student recruitment and now I continue to um, consult in the field as it were obviously with the um, with 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 the with the pandemic um, and all the changes that is forcing onto universities and the difference in the experiences that students are having, wh where do you see um, kind of marketing and um, sort of video student created content sort of supporting that experience um, and being able to help students to navigate their way through these, um, you know, kind of really unusual circumstances? Well, I think it's been, probably the biggest experiment in the history of mankind where we've taken a billion students and asked them to do all their learning online. And so we've seen that happen in a matter of days and months. And a lot of it, I think, is going to stick with us. You know, I, I now have uh, FaceTime calls with my elderly relatives, and that would never happen before. You know, they, they, they would never have jumped on a Zoom call for a Friday afternoon get together. So I think we've all adapted the way that we use technology, and in particular, face-to-face -face video technology. So I think that for marketeers, it's actually a fantastic time because we've got these tools available to us um, and suddenly that resistance to using them has disappeared. Everybody's on digital, everybody's on FaceTime and Zoom and all those kind of platforms. Um, and we've all become much more familiar with this kind of scenario. I mean, ordinarily, if you'd asked me if we could have a chat, we would be sitting in a Starbucks rather than on Zoom. Yeah, ab 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 absolutely, with, without a doubt. And um, I mean, bearing, bearing that in mind in the sort of way that we're all using digital tools differently, um, what, what do you think the best tactics are like right now um, to, to support this year's intake, really? Um, I mean, not, not just with the onboarding, but through the year. How um, can communications... Um, sort of marketing teams help students with some of these digital tools to overcome some of the challenges that the students are facing or they're perceiving they're going to face? So I, I think that students have been using digital tools to determine where they're going to go and study and they've been doing research across a number of websites and they've been using social media and YouTube and looking at videos and so I think the uh, the challenges remain the same, which is to find a true value proposition and to articulate that value proposition 
in an authentic manner. And I would underline the word authentic. And I think that that in many ways comes from peer-to-peer -peer communication. It comes from students talking about the experiences that they've had. Um, and I think that a lot of it now is going to be about what additional support is being offered. I mean, I think we are, we're in this bizarre time where blended learning is there and there's an opportunity, I think, to communicate to students the um, service that they're going to receive, what the experience is going to be like. And I think that they're looking to uh, be shown rather than told what that experience is going to be. And I think that video and authentic student generated content are absolutely key in being able to deliver that message. Uh, and, and, and where would you see um, kind of student storytelling fitting into this? So you, you, you mentioned the importance of authenticity. Um, what, what kind of stories do you think are going to need to be amplified over the coming months that will kind of help reassure, um, guide, um, educate, um, with, you know, students through the kind of content that they're creating themselves? I, I think it comes back to the, the traditional art of storytelling. Um, irrespective of the medium, there needs to be a story. And quite often as marketeers, we, we forget that. And we try to act like we're MTV pushing out promotional videos that, that don't have a beginning, middle or end. And I think that people are looking for um, real authentic stories of how people overcome adversity starting a university, leaving your home, being in a new city, all of these things are, are challenging at the best of times and, and can be downright frightening in the current times. And I think that people want to be able to see how other people have overcome those challenges in a very real sense. And I think that where there is an institution that is offering support and guidance, they want to be able to showcase that. And I think being able to showcase that what better way than those people who have, have first-hand experience it, telling the stories of their experiences. Um, so I think that the technology just enables that rather than, um, you know, we've always been able to do it. It's just the technology now is making it that much easier to both create and, and record the stories and also to distribute and ensure that the right person hears the right story at the right time. Mm. And do, do you think the current situation with the pandemic has made this more of a priority or um, is, it, is it kind of a, a, about the same? You know, is, I, is, I, is, is... I think it's more of a priority now, A, because I think people are more unsure and therefore they, they need more reassurance. Um, but equally, we're all living in a similar situation, I think, that international students have found themselves in for a long time, which is that you're remote. So a student that's maybe sitting in Hong Kong thinking of coming to the UK for the first time can't pop along to the open day. Um, so they've always wanted to have that sort of remote access to content. And I think quite often now, as we've been in this lockdown, domestic students are facing the same challenges that online can be the only source of information and that you're going to want to be able to do a lot of that research from the comfort of your own home. That's, that's really interesting. And, 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 and with your experience with international students, what are the kind of typical things that have really resonated with that audience that potentially um, marketing teams who've been communicating and connecting with um, domestic market perhaps wouldn't have expected? I think it's the, the micro needs. I think at one end of the extreme, you've got the outcome. Students really interested in what's going to happen next? What, what does success look like? I'm going to get this great degree and then I'm going to get an internship and then I'm going to get a great job and I really want to understand what the full journey looks like. Um, but then also within that, I want to understand whether I can walk to the 7-Eleven from my accommodation and whether they sell the favourite noodles I've always grown up eating. Oh, and by the way, can I bring my favourite pillow? You know, there are these kind of very real, real human needs that need to be answered. Um, as well as the big things. And I think that universities sometimes forget that, you know, we end up in that sort of free in a tree, you know, the typical old, you know, I've got this lovely picture of a sunny day on a campus with three students holding books to their chest, standing near a tree in a lovely part of the campus with the words, we are very welcoming to international students. And it just becomes, there's just nothing authentic about that. And it doesn't tell you anything about the real difference between, you know, maybe an urban campus 
versus a, a rural campus where the only way to get there is, is a bus that only runs till seven o'clock in the evening or whatever it might be. I think it's that, that real sort of realism of, um, and, and trying to not make people jump through hoops. You know, they, they've got Google Maps and they can work out whether Uber's in the region or whether you can get pizza delivery, but probably better just to authentically tell them rather than make them do lots and lots of research. Absolutely. And, and, and lastly, um, kind of, I mean, obviously, if it was traditionally easy to capture all of this kind of content from students, the, the internet would be flooded with it. I mean, what, what lessons have you learned about engaging students um, to share stories um, and, and, and to be able to, um, you know, kind of share them in a meaningful way that's going to be meaningful to their peers? So in the very early days uh, of UCTV, one of the first things we did is we thought, right, let's, let's use money. And so we put out a £5,000 prize for the student that would create the content that got the most views on YouTube. And we thought this is going to be a great way to generate huge amounts of user-generated content, which it did. I then had to give a £5,000 check to a, a very inventive young lady who had just tagged her video um, female student trampolining in underwear and it turns out that basically those those search terms had meant that her video got more views than anybody so there's a there's a really good lesson in, in how not to generate student content it, it was totally fine she actually was, was perfectly well dressed uh, it just she knew that how to work the algorithms um, so I've tried lots of different ways to stimulate content I think that bite size and authentic is, is probably uh, the most useful way. And I think that really it's around purpose. There's been some great things in the sector, like the, the we are international and you are welcome here on the back of the kind of Brexit and Trump things where people really feel that they need to tell people that international students are welcome. And there's been a load of great content around people looking after other people's mental health and caring for one another. So I find that sort of purpose driven content inherently we're all good people and we do want to help one another and quite often that can be the motivating factor that leads to that authentic content i think the the challenge that we face as marketeers is being honest with ourselves about what is the authentic unique value proposition of one place of study over another and then how do we get the students to help tell that story Fantastic. Tony, thank you so much for um, sharing those insights with us today. Thank you.